So in today's video, we will talk about network segmentation. And a lot of enterprise companies would do something like this uh, using firewalls. And uh, we will look at this solution, the segmentation of your network so that your traffic is completely isolated from a L3 routing and VRF standpoint. So the objective here is that we enable this flow of traffic. So pretend that this VOS2, we've got the setup which in this setup, the VOS1 is just pretend that's the application that two different segments from your network. Segment one is V3 and segment two is V4, two different or two or more segments, wants to come and access a common application. You will see in the, in the enterprise networks typically that every application group will have a firewall in front of them. That's a very traditional approach. But if you want to solve this from a L3 routing and an advanced VRF perspective, you can do that. Uh, and then the way that's going to work is the core router, which is your core L3 router or L3 switch, would have to be designed in a segmented way. So I would just call this guy core L3 device, right? And so this device if you were to put firewalls in front of every application set, then this core L3 device would route between this segment and this segment and this segment and, and you know, basically have the routes for every prefix and segment. So if you were to take a different approach other than the firewall, and you would have to segment your network using L3 VRS. And to do that, a lot of service providers do that because it's much more scalable compared to putting a pair of firewalls in front of every set of applications. And the way to do that is essentially, instead of having every segment or interface in a default, routing table, you would create segments, L3 segments. So let's just say that we put on L3 device or L3 core switch, we put this interface on a V1 VRF. We put this segment on a V3 VRF. And we put this segment on a V4 VRF. So these are our VRS, right? What that would enable us to do is that they would the the traffic between V3, V4 is going to get isolated. They would not be able to talk to each other at all. And that's a design decision that it would take. And most of the time, applications, the user accessing the applications, they don't need to talk to each other. Let's just say this this segment is sales and they have nothing to do with engineering. So you don't need this traffic between them and therefore you can segment that for security reasons. And again, I like I said, a lot of people do that by putting firewalls in front of every segment to, you know, and then that'll, that's basically creating a, you know, a sprawl of firewalls in front of every segment, every application. And then it's a firewall nightmare. The hot, better way to scale this or design this from an L3 perspective is you put these segments in a different VRF, L3 VRF segments, and then you do route leaking. So you do route leaking, and that route leaking would enable you 
to permit your traffic from this segment to your application and from this segment to your application. And you do not put a route between these two. All right. So what I've done, I've used v VOS routers because VOS does support 1.3 above supports VRS. And I'll demonstrate this to you. What I've done is I've put, I've created three VRFs, VRF1, VRF4, and VRF3. And I've associated these VRFs to the interfaces. You don't have to create any VRFs here. No VRFs here. Only on the L3 device, you create the VRFs, associate with the segments or interfaces that are facing towards the application or different users. Now, all you gotta do, once you do that, obviously, uh, you need to be able to do route leaking. And that's what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna create a route and I'm gonna re leak the route between the two VRFs here and do the same here between V1 and V4 and V1 and V3. And I'll show you that configuration. So let's take a look at that. I'll show you the route table for our, this setup is all up. The V3 is got a loop back 33333. Three, three. V4 has got a loop back 4222. And they both are trying to reach uh, an application address called 21111. And when I run the pings, I'm going to source it with this. I'm not going to source it with this guy uh, because it's a transit traffic. So I'm, I want to source it from here. And I'll show you the configuration of the L3 device and how that's done. So let's first look at our V2's routing table. And this is how the routing table looks like. This is our global routing table and see there's nothing in it uh, except for the loopback. All the interfaces are hidden. But if you do show run interfaces, you will see all the interfaces. VOS doesn't tell you which interface is associated with what, but if you do the, the show IP route VRF, it will show you. So now we will run a ping from V3 to the 21 address. Run ping. 2111 interface B33. There you go. And let's just say that we go and I've enabled monitor traffic on Ethernet Zero so that I can see the pings are coming through. And they are sources, destination is 21 and source is 33. Okay. And then I'm going to go on V4. And do the same. And so both the routers or application or users are able to access this guy, but they are not going to be able to access each other, which is if I try to reach M, we lost three. I won't be able to. Similarly, if I try to reach from VOS3 to VOS4. Now remember, we are not using any firewalls here, just layer three segmentation using VRS. We are not able to talk to each other. We are only able to talk to the application for which we have created route leaking. Now let's look at, take a look at the configuration of our VOS. So I'm in the VRF configuration. If I do show, you create the name first of the first VRF, you create a static route to the application, which is 2111, and you put the next top So you have this VRF V1, 
you create a protocol static route, next hop, your route is your application address and your next hop is your interface address of the application, which is VOS1. And then you create a reverse route towards the source, which is this guy, the VOS3 and VOS4. So this, these are the three static routes and you can do that through dynamic as well. But in this demo, we'll do static routes to keep it simple. In the VRF1, we created three routes, one towards the application and the others towards the source that they're coming from. All right. And then that's, that's the VRF facing V1, the application side. Let's take a look at the other VRFs. You have to associate a table when you create a VRF. And here's VRF3 and 4. You create a route to your application address, next top the VOS1 address, and then you put that in, you leak that route into VRF1. So you're in VRF3, you're leaking it into VRF1 because the VRF1 is facing towards the application. Exactly the same scenario for VRF4, coming from this side, leaking that route into VRF1. That's a technique called route leaking. And that technique is popular with large scale networks where you cannot really manage firewalls in front of every single user, or you don't have the ability to put those firewalls. You just need to segment it. Um, and then therefore you can use this route leaking technique to segment. Uh, you can even say customer one to customer two, but you can't have overlapping addresses you have to have unique addresses because you need to have a route back to that address and if, you, if there is a scenario a scenario where you do have overlapping then you have to do some complicated stuff with like nats and all that stuff uh, but that's beyond our discussion but in this simple scenario you can test out route leaking and how you can create network segmentation network segmentation to create security in your network at an L3 level without having firewalls here, firewalls here, and firewalls here. Hope this helps.